What's going on everybody? Wow, sorry I'm late uh, for this beer review. Um, I'm a lot less prepared than I thought that I was. I was very confident going into this and now I'm not confident. Uh, but you know, that's okay. It's a bit windy and I'm outside, but I think I have just the microphone to handle that. So welcome to yet another beer reviews. Don't forget to hydrate before you dehydrate. And if you don't have a breaking glass, don't worry, because I'm still off my game with that myself. So, sorry about that. I have... Alright, had to turn up my brightness. Couldn't see me. I was doing, the, doing this show blind. Um, special guest today, Greg of Secret Gardens. He is the uh, he is the brains, the operator of the wonderful post rock experience, Secret Gardens. I'm gonna go ahead and get him in and have us a fun little chat. Hey hey hey, what's up, man? Not much. How are you, dude? Dude, I'm good. I'm I'm doing well. How about yourself? Oh yeah, I'm good. Uh, I just I worked overnight last night. Uh, oh, yeah. So I just I just like took a huge nap. So now I'm up and now I'm alive. <laughs> Sweet. All right. Ready to drink some beer. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, can you hear me fine? Are you getting a lot of wind from my end? No, of things? no, I'm good. Okay, it's, good. It's it's pretty much just like little background noise. All right. Sweet. This uh, this microphone is being tested right now because. It is supposed to be resistant to wind, um, but I've never, I've never uh, had to test that out. Yeah, well, it sounds pretty good from what I can hear. Sweet. One thing that I didn't consider is uh, it's all made of plastic. This stand, and so <laughs> it it does like to break on occasion. Like it's plastic. Like, yeah, but. After this, oh, that's good. Cool. <laughs> cool. This is, uh, this is probably my best intro ever. No, to, it's uh, fine. To one of these, <laughs> one of these shows. That's all good, um, dude. So thanks, thanks for being. It sounds like it looks like you've already started the beer review. I'm kidding. Um, I cracked her open. I it was just instinct. That was pure instinct. I don't know why I did it for any other reason than that. But, Fine, I can crack open mine too. Yeah. So, uh, what do you have? I have a uh, Rev Nats Portland style hard cider uh, that I got when I was in Portland this summer. Uh, I I freaking love these, and they yeah. don't they don't ship them. Like I'm from New York, and I live in New York right now. Um, okay. Well, mostly in New York, but yeah, they uh, they fucking uh, don't sh like. You can only get them in Portland. They don't ship them yeah. anywhere. They don't have That's like a huge sweet. nationwide distribution deal. So anytime I'm in, in town, I'm like, oh, I got to grab like two or three cases of this. And yeah, yeah it, right. This is the sweet. pineapple flavor. It's super, super good. It sounds great. Mm -hmm. So refreshing. I bet. Yeah, that sounds like that would be a good one any time of year. Yeah. I honest, Yeah, I don't, I don't even care that it's like getting chillier out. I, this is still yeah. great. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it does hit in the summer, too. Oh, I'm sure it slaps in the summer when it's nice and hot. Get a little nice, pineapple nice little barbecue. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dude, you could probably grill with that. Like, use it as oh, a Oh, yeah, that's, a, that's brilliant. That's a great idea, actually. Yeah. I would, yeah. If I knew more about grilling and, like, was a grill dad, I would probably, like, do that kind of a shit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm pretty into it. I didn't do as much as usual this past year, but um, yeah, man, you can do some amazing things with. You're like, what, would you, what would you like? Would you like marinate it in the salt in the, the cider or something? You could definitely add the cider to a marinade um, and get some some saturation that way. You could turn that cider into a Q sauce, which would probably be the coolest thing. That yeah. sounds amazing, actually. Yeah, yeah. Just baste a, 
pineapple cider barbecue sauce over your goods. Mm. Um, <laughs> and those are probably like the two major ways I would do it. Dude, you're about to make me like have the munchies after we get off this interview. Get you some barbecue, man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's not really much good barbecue around where I'm at, but there's plenty yeah. of great food. Shoot, man. That's too bad. I just, barbecue isn't a big deal where I'm at either, but there are a few places. There are a couple. and they are. You're in the Midwest, high. right? Where are you at? I'm actually in Florida. Oh, you're in Florida? Okay. Very far from the Midwest. Yeah. Oh, um, interesting. So yeah, you're, in, you're in Central Time or Eastern Time? I'm in Central because I live in Northwest Florida. If you go, uh, oh, okay, yeah. If you go, like, I think you only have to go two hours east from where I'm at, and then you get uh, the next. Yeah. Zone. What are you in, like Tallahassee or? I'm in. Uh, I'm not far from Tallahassee, but I'm a lot more west than that. If you know Destin, Florida, okay, or Is that... maybe you've heard of Pensacola. Yes, Florida. I've heard it. Yeah, yeah. I'm um, like 40 minutes away from Pensacola, Florida. Okay, yeah. cool. I know like one person from there, but yes, oh, yeah, I, yeah. Nice. I understand. I've I've been in that area like once in my life. It was it was yeah. pretty neat. That's where I got like, I played a show with my old band there, and we got really really good food at the place we were playing at. It was like this small sort of like mom and pop hole in the wall place in the. Uh, we were we were in. Um, Shit, what was that place in Alabama we were in? We were in, like, that coastal city in Alabama. What is it? Oh, Gulf Breeze? No. That's the, the big one. Else? Oh, Mobile. Yeah, Mobile, yes. Yeah, oh, yeah Mobile that's is great. Yeah, yeah. I love Mobile. Got good food there, for yeah. sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and pretty decent variety, too. Yeah. Yeah, people were nice, too. It was, it was tight. Yeah. When's the last time you went there? Uh, That was... Uh, I was really miserable on tour. I was dealing with a breakup. I think it was like 2019, I want to say, I think. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's even better now. <laughs> like in the past couple of years, there's some, some like cool businesses and just more like bands, you know, music people, all that kind of stuff. There's just more now. Um, Word. Yeah, is that your closest good. major city? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I'm, I'm two hours, about two hours away from so. Okay, sweet. Tight. Tight, tight, tight. And I get to see bands there sometimes, too, because they have a few music venues that actually get some of the bigger name bands. So nice. Every once in a while. Yeah, that's like kind of a B or C market city, I think. Yeah, probably a C, but... Yeah, I would, wouldn't know. But that's good enough. <laughs> That'll get a few cool people there. <laughs> it's cool. You'd be surprised what you find in these, like, lesser-known cities. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I just feel like culture is so spread out evenly now with social media you can mm -hmm. go you can go to a small place like Pensacola is way cooler than you might think if you have never heard of it and right and you find out it's just this you know little port town yeah but, um, yeah it's pretty cool well, yeah so how did you how did you get started doing like beer reviews on Instagram live it's kind of a yeah. cool concept Thank you. Um, I'm pretty proud of it, actually. And it all, like many things that uh, seem to just work, uh, I started it just because. <laughs> um, Fair enough, yeah. Here's, here's the story. Last year, I was coming home from work. It was April 7th. And it was one of those days of work where it wasn't a tough day, but it was a, I'm getting... A, some beers after work type of right. day. Oh, yeah. We've all had those. Yep, yep. I picked up a four-pack of Tall Boys, Pabst Blue Ribbon, from the gas station. Classic. Pulling up to my house. There's a bunch of cars there. I'm like, wow, must be having a party, actually. <laughs> so I go inside, 
my wife's got like six of her friends hanging out. Uh, I'm going to take these glasses off. Cool. I don't know if I'm giving a glare, but the sun's like right there. Yeah, so yeah. My eyes are getting glared. Yep. Um, she's got like six friends there. And I don't even remember why, but she just had a, a hangout going. And she, she, I bring these beers in, and she's like, oh, did you get those for National Beer Day? And I said, National Beer Day? That's <laughs> sick. I didn't even know that was a thing. I had no idea. Yeah, uh, it's funny. There's like a National Everything Day, but you yeah. just never hear about it. And sometimes you yeah. wonder if it's even real. I do I that all the time. Every time someone's like... Oh, it's National Boyfriend Day. I'm like, isn't, yeah, that like right, the right. Third, isn't that like the third time this has happened within a year span? <laughs> and I'm like, is someone like fucking rigging the system or some shit? <laughs> I wonder, dude, because, and that's that's something the more I hear, you know, National Donut Day, National Beer yeah, Day, dude. Na- National Bourbon Day. And know? I'm really like, where did this trend come from? Is, mm-hmm. there, is there actually like a database someone's looking at? Or is someone just exactly. randomly deciding that it is National Donut Day and they try to see how, like... Yeah far yeah, they yeah. can fucking spread it like wildfire yeah, yeah Chris the only one doing some some backhand stuff some some sleight of hand stuff yeah the only one i know is a thing because like i don't know this isn't like too indicative of me but if i were to choose my favorite fast food place it'd probably be taco bell and they have like this little box that they do in the beginning of every october for mm-hmm. national taco day so i do remember that that's a real thing because it's the beginning of october but all the other things like don't exist in time and space in my mind. Like, yeah, I couldn't tell you I when. Just like, find out about them. Yeah, National Donut Day. I would be like, that's yeah. that might not be real. Someone might have made that up. Yeah, I know. But I thought, wouldn't it be interesting if you? I don't. I don't even know. But if you research, I don't know how you do this. But if you really said, okay, are these things real? <laughs> Let's find out. Yeah, I don't know. Much, there's like, where would you find it? You know, who decided? I wonder if there's some like official database on like a government website, like decreed by the federal government or some bullshit. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fake fun. holidays, <laughs> fake legit holidays. <laughs> um, this is a thing I think about often. Yeah, I mean, if you if you really want to make your way in the world, these are the important issues obviously (laughs) so i come home i find out it's national beer day and my wife's got all of her friends over so it's one of those perfect situations she's good she's hanging out you know she's doing her thing uh and it's national beer day which means Mm -hmm. i can you know do my thing so i was uh i was like I got to get something special, you know, for National Beer Day. I got to get something good. My brother-in-law had been talking up the Goose Island Bourbon Barrel County Stout. They do it every year. Hmm. They have they have three at three different price points. But the baseline, the baseline is just a one year age bourbon barrel stout. Super, super good. But I hadn't tried it yet. And I I was like, today's the day. Nice. I went over to the liquor store and I got this amazing bottle of beer. I'm driving home and I thought to myself, I could make it even more special if I film it. <laughs> if I like do a video because I love doing stuff like this. So naturally I had that idea. And I went home, I set up my computer, which is hilarious. These videos are on YouTube, so you can find them. I did a dual beer review. I did one video of Pat's and then another video of the Bourbon Barrel County style. And basically, I was I had so much fun doing it that I thought, I'll just do this again. <laughs> and eventually, I had the idea of doing the Instagram Live because now you can post that. It doesn't disappear yeah. after your story, which is yeah really sick feature to add i'm I'm glad they did that because i don't have enough storage on my phone oh yeah me neither (laughs) yeah yeah right i can't do these on my on my phone yeah uh my computer camera is just so atrocious and the audio is not same 
and I have the technical uh, understanding of a second grader. So I'm not even going to try to like do this with a legit camera and figure yeah. all that out. So I was like, Instagram Live. And that's how that became a thing. Yeah, it is very accessible. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, so you get the storage of streaming. You get the good, the better camera of the phone. Uh, but now I, I have a lens attachment and a oh, nice. mic. So, yeah, it's a good setup. Wait. Yeah. So, anyway. Yeah, man. Dude, I wanted to ask you... Um, because you're a musician, uh, mm -hmm. for, for anybody who may or may not know, uh, you have a couple songs. What got you into music? <clears throat> um, well, I guess it's something that I've always connected with. Uh, yeah, just from a young age. And then I, I have three brothers, two older, one younger. And my oldest brother, this is back when, like, like my chem was starting to blow up and like green day was starting to like yeah. be mainstream, <laughs> like American yeah. idiot, like right. three cheers for sweet revenge era. Uh, mm. I, I, my brother was just really into it. And I like, I remember liking music and being like, Oh, I like this song. And like, I have this one or two CDs in my Walkman. Mm -hmm. I probably sound so <laughs> fucking old saying that. How but, old are you? Uh, 27. I'm 27. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Right yeah. on. 27 Club. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, no, so I remember my brother showing me more of, like, the emo, like, rock stuff that was, like, kind of scary to a younger kid. Like, yeah. but I remember being, like, <laughs> so interested. Uh, and I was like, shit, like, this is kind of, like, weird, like, shocking at first. But I also remember being like, what the hell? Like, I'm, yeah. I'm so weirdly interested. <laughs> and then started listening to that type of stuff more, like, <laughs> Foo Fighters and Fall Out Boy and, you know, and then I like randomly, like, I got LimeWire when I was on, like, my freaking family computer and I somehow didn't <laughs> fuck it up, actually. I was actually yeah. pretty good with it. Uh, and I just, you know, I started listening to, like, System of Down and, like, you know, it was, like, the booming age <laughs> of the internet where you could actually find and discover music and, like, MySpace yeah. was popping and I found, like, oh, random yeah. small bands on MySpace and it, like, it grew pretty fast. <laughs> And then my brother, uh, like, playing music, my brother also started playing guitar at that time. And he was already older, like, senior in high school type shit okay. age. And I was, like, in elementary school at the end of it, like, like fifth grade. And then that's yeah. when I got a guitar, because like, I think my mom got me one, too. And, yeah, and then I just started, I started learning, like, every green day, every green day, yeah. like, possible, because they're all just power chords and, like... Right. Yeah, and then, like, you pick it up. one day someone taught me, like, or one day, uh, oh, and then Guitar Hero was a thing, so that showed me a yeah. ton of new music, and then I that's when I heard that. The Fall of Troy for the first time, and then I was like, oh, my God, what the fuck is this shit? So then I started learning <laughs> that stuff and, like, somehow getting better and better, and then, yeah, I mean, I don't know, it all just, like, spilled into what it is now. That's sweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and I also cool. had like a lot of musical friends growing up too, like like a community almost. Like my cousin was like a really That's like nice. he, he's he was like pretty good at drums and my same age, so we like just kind of grew up together. And like I'd also had other friends and we would jam, we were like, bands and yeah, blah, right. blah. That's pretty sweet. That's how high school was for me. I went to a high school that actually had a lot of legitimately talented mm -hmm. musicians and. We were we were always trying to like finagle some band idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it never worked out, but we did play a lot, so nice. that was fun. What did, what did you play? Uh, guitar, bass, and vocals. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. I, I do all that stuff, and then I I play drums too. Yeah. Hence why yeah. like the album. I, I don't know what. I don't know if you've heard the whole thing or whatnot. I've heard the whole thing. Thank you, man. Uh, yeah, Several I, times. I did everything on it. That's so cool. I was going to ask you about that because um, I, I was wondering if you had anybody for instruments you don't play, but, but no, you did I'm, all of it. Yeah, cool. on Tundra, on my first two re uh, releases, Vero and Tundra, mm -hmm. uh, no, I did I did everything. 
on my next album, I am uh, kind of outsourcing a bit and collaborating a bit more. On my okay. next album, I have uh, Joseph Arrington playing drums. He's he's in the that band Royal Coda and plays okay. with Kurt Travis and stuff. And I think I've seen actually some of his uh, Instagram. Yeah, he's a stuff. fucking monster. He's like one of my favorite yeah. people in the world and like favorite drummers he's, ever. He's post rock, is he? No, he's more yeah. like okay. Post hardcore, like mm -hmm. jazzy rock type shit, like, yeah. Associated with like those like Swan Court, like Dance Gavin Dance type bands and shit. But uh, he's not in that band. But yeah, but no, we're we're uh, we made the next Secret Gardens album, and nice. uh, we're gonna record it in uh, around New Year's. We're gonna like get in the studio and start drum tracking and shit. Sweet. And uh, yeah, awesome. this 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 next album is gonna be a little bit more collaborative and uh -huh. I don't yeah. know yeah that'll be awesome man yeah that'll yeah. be fun do you think it'll have a little bit of a different sound than Tundra or yes it will yeah um That's because cool. I'm doing I don't know if you picked up on this or not but I'm doing like a four season arc with each record so mm. Veirão is the Portuguese word for summer so that's like okay. the summer album. Tundra is the winter one. Yeah. The next one is a season that I, it's another season. I don't want to like say it yet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Keep that on the DL. Yeah. No, because I kind of want it to be more of like a surprise when it's out. But okay. uh, nice. yeah, the next one is one of the only other two seasons left. You take your pick. You take your yeah. guess. But yeah, no, we wrote it. <laughs> we wrote it this year. Wrote it and uh, I plan to record it and blah 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 and mm -hmm. uh yeah and that's awesome basically i wanted so tundra like they're kind of like the sonic representation of each season in my opinion like yeah and i i started out with this idea but now i'm finding ways to embellish it more so like so tundra i feel like is like a fully fleshed out like art work and art form from start to finish mm -hmm. uh the first EP or album, I don't know, it's five songs, 25 minutes, I don't know if you probably, you want to maybe call that an EP, I guess, but the first record, I, I want to add, the summer one, I want to add songs to it and re-release it as like a re, like a deluxe reissue oh, kind of thing. Yeah, that's a good idea. So that it's like a fully completed, like, body of work, and I have plenty of ideas on how to do that, but that's yeah. coming at a later time, I have too much shit to do right now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, so, like, I want all of them to, like, I would say that I'm a really, like, varied person musically, like, with it, with my influences. Like, I love, like, the lamest, like, corniest pops ever, but I also, like, have been absolutely loving the, like, Every Time I Die album that just came out. And, like, you know, it, it's, like, I have a pretty large spectrum, so. Yeah, I'm the same way. Yeah, so, like, yeah. the... So I like winter is like obviously like cold, desolate, depressing, like emotional uh, season, and like summer is kind of like I see summer as like a hazy, like fun, bright season and that also has its like really fun moments. And then spring, I would say, is more of like an exciting, like vibrant, and like really driving season. And then fall is like kind of like a I don't know, it's like a, like an organic, like, winding down, like, very homey type of yeah. season, if that makes sense. So, like, I want to incorporate each of those feelings into each album. And for the next album, I definitely, like, yeah, it's like polar. I don't know, it's, I would say it's polar opposite from Tundra, but I don't, like, it still sounds like a yeah. Secret Gardens album, if that makes right. sense. But it sounds like a yeah. Secret Gardens album with, like, one of those other seasons in mind. Feel. Yeah, it's yeah. not like... Like, when I was writing Tundra, I was going through probably the worst, like, six months of my entire life. Like, okay. straight up, no, like, full stop. I was, like, fucking miserable. And it was, like, the only, it was, like, the only, like, thing I had was creating that record. So, yeah. and I don't know if you can hear any of the songs or not. I was, like, really going through it. It, it was just... So it was, like, the perfect storm, the way it worked out, because I knew, like, I wanted it to sound as, like depressing yeah. and emotional but also like i don't know just 
driving in my own sort of way within those like boundaries mm -hmm. and then yeah the next record does not have like such a heavy weight to it but it's okay. still like it's still like emotions i yeah have wanted to get out in situations like you know yeah. it's like putting a soundtrack to situations and things i've been through mm -hmm. and like stuff i've like just seen that i just kind of wanted to put into sonic form does that make sense so yeah it does yeah, yeah it, it'll it'll be secret gardens but a different experience basically mm -hmm. yeah that's, that's a nice awesome. way to put it yeah, yeah I, and i don't want to oh, like yeah. i don't want to like ever release the same exact record twice exactly yeah but i still want people to like I don't want to alienate the people who like really love Tundra, you know? Yeah. Um, so I, I, I don't know if this next record will, I don't, I hope not. Um, it's definitely going to be not as sad and not as like yeah. emotional sounding. It's going to be like, you know, something different than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. But I mean, yeah, like you gotta, you gotta do it. You gotta, you got you have to expand your um your creativity you know you have to delve into all the different corners for sure mm -hmm. um i don't know i just feel like that's for a creative person i feel like that's almost a responsibility to uh to take yeah. it as far as you as you can go you know go to all the different places in the creative universe I guess. yeah and like it, I don't know. It was good because it didn't feel forced at all. It just felt really natural. Yeah, I guess that's what I mean is, you know, yeah, you, like, if the fire is burning, let's do it. Yeah, like... And if it's different, in, that's probably a good thing. Yeah, in the, in the case of Tundra, like, the, like, cold, like, my life is miserable fire was burning, so I was just yeah. riding that way. <laughs> yeah. But this was, like... That. This one one was like a lot more like the different tune of like, hey, things aren't that bad actually. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. working with Joe uh, actually made the process like a lot more fun and exciting and like yeah, that's cool. really just something else fucking stoked on. So mm -hmm. you can definitely hear that in the in the like demos we have at least that we made. Uh, but hopefully you'll be able to hear that when we actually start tracking the, the studio next month or uh, two months from now. That's awesome, man. Um, for Tundra, so the whole album is great. Thank um, you. I've, you're welcome. I, I've listened to it. Uh, I've listened to it a few times. I'm not gonna lie. Hell yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's That's awesome. I re I don't even I don't remember anymore. Um, I don't remember when I when I found you, but I found you through Instagram. And I'm pretty sure it was from, you sponsored um, a piece of, like, your music video from uh, I'm Fucking Tired of Being Sad. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, yeah. I was I was and doing so, those playthrough videos, yeah. Um, yeah. I like doing those little playthrough videos. Those are yeah, fun. Yeah, those are good. Because it's I like, bet. I get to actually, like, play the drum part, play the guitar part, play the bass part, like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's weird, because it's like, those are, like, in between a music video and, a, like, a real, like, <laughs> music video and then also like in, they're just like a playthrough video like it, it's like a different type of video that i feel like the instrumental genre kind of you can you can like make those kind of things and your fans yeah will, or, or like new people will like oh man get engaged yeah. with it but yeah no thanks for checking it. that out of course well thanks for sponsoring it because that's how i got to see yeah. it in the first place yeah uh, sometimes it, you throw 20 bucks into a video and you make a new you know yeah. make a couple new followers and it's cool mm -hmm. yeah definitely yeah so you know i i follow a lot of a fair amount of post-rock bands artists like yourself who are you know uh, one-man bands um and so my feed was just like adam will like this let's give it to him and <laughs> of course i saw that i see this video and you know, you're out there in the snow, fingerless gloves. What a great move. Just, uh, <laughs> How else are you going to play guitar? guitar. 
in the snow probably no other way <laughs> dude filming those was crazy dude i yeah i, I have so many i could be on instagram <laughs> I lost uh I lost your audio. If you can hear me. I can't hear you. Still not getting anything. Oh, there we go. I hear you. Yeah, okay. There we go. <laughs> Hold on. Do you see me now? Yeah, I see you cool. and hear you. All cool, right, great. we're back. We're, we're back. back. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I had to do so much like fucked up shit in the snow to get <laughs> right for this album. It was like, yeah, it was it was pretty fucked. And, like, I I just have nothing but like thankfulness to uh, to like the the people who would help me film stuff and like all mm -hmm. the like. I guess I would say crew, but they're all just my friends, like, who would just help me That's out sweet. with, like, filming dope shit, and my yeah. the videographer and photographer, so, like, nice fucking saint for helping me out with all this stuff, and, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, and, yeah, the fingerless gloves, shout out yeah. to for a $7 purchase. Just yeah, to, yeah, like, baby. Bezos, but. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome, man. Yeah, that that was a cool video, and actually talking about it finally makes me think, like, that was real snow. Oh yeah, no. it must have been actually cold, and I'm just now registering. That was probably not a walk in the park to to make that video. Well, it quite literally was a walk in the park, but yeah, there's <laughs> not by. Mm -hmm. uh, so I like, <clears throat> excuse me. I sort of like half live in Rhode Island with a okay mate of mine and friend that I collaborate on a lot of music with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a spot near her house that was like this little like this like this little dock by like a little tiny okay. like pond lake thing, and the lake yeah. is like, frozen over because it's Rhode Island and it's the middle of January or whatever it is. Yeah, so we just went out on a sunny day and filmed that, and I all yeah. like the studio <laughs> footage of me playing drums to it from like a few months prior because I just like booked a studio day and did a bunch of like mm -hmm. songs with, on nice. video and shit. But honestly, that video wasn't that cold because the sun was out. Have you seen mm -hmm. the, the Kosciuszko music video? I don't think I have actually. Oh, okay. I would, I would, uh, I think it's a good video. I think, okay. I think it's <laughs> I'll check fun. it out. It's like fun and well, it's yeah. not, it's not fun. It's actually like a dramatic <laughs> like story, but that's uh -huh. like, that's like an official music video. That's not like just okay. me playing through the song. That's like yeah. a video with a story that I worked with my friend, Chris, who's like an a really good cinematographer and director. Um, sweet. Uh, he he has a company called Dynamic Motion Pictures. Um, yeah, th that's I think that's in my bio, or you could just go on YouTube and search Secret Gardens Kosciuszko music video. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, that that shoot was the coldest fucking thing. Yeah. Because <laughs> we did it, we needed night and winter. And okay. We, nice. so we filmed we filmed from like four p.m. to four a.m. every for for two days straight. Wow. And yeah, and we got this spot in the middle of the woods at my friend's parents' house. We had, like, a bunch of property. Mm -hmm. And holy shit, man, I've never been so cold in my fucking life. Like, it was nuts. Yeah. Um, yeah, that yeah. sounds rough. Especially pretty, like, coming from the heat down yeah. here in Florida. And I'm, no I'm not much of an actor or anything, but it felt cool to be, like, yeah. like immersed in that, like wow, I'm actually out here doing this and not faking yeah. it kind of thing. Like, it felt right, cool to make right. a video that way, like, the real way, because I actually was fucking freezing. And, yeah. like, you, you'll see when you watch the video, like... Okay, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna watch that. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy, dude. Night and winter, where winter actually happens, to me, yeah, it was, sounds like it that's pretty, the real deal. It was... I was, like, close to hypothermia a few Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god. Um but so song right before that, Stillness. Yeah. What yeah. a beautiful song, man. Thank you. Um yeah. that I so I saw the the music video 
uh, so back to where we were. Um, that's how I found you is from that post where you're uh, in the snow doing I'm fucking tired of being sad. And I was like, I'm fucking tired of being sad, too. <laughs> I'll go check this guy out. That's why I wrote it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was, like, a really cool, funny name, but also, like, relatable. So I went and checked you out. And I was like, man, this guy's legit. Thank so, um, yeah, of course. So I go to uh, Apple Play. I listen to the album. And um, I really liked it. But that song, Stillness stood out so much because dude and i don't mean to flatter you here that's not my intent but (laughs) that's how it'll come across i haven't heard a song that beautiful since 2012 and the way just (laughs) the way that it builds it it just kind of builds and um you did a, like a breakdown video for that song and you were yes, talking about, yeah. yeah, you were talking about how you decided to use a, a nylon string classical guitar. Right? Yeah, this one right here. I had it. Nice. I had it right behind me. Yeah, this, Sick. Gu- this guitar is amazing. I got it in... Uh, it must be. It sounds really, really good. Yeah, I got it in Portugal actually when I went. Nice. Wow. That's so cool. Yeah. Oh, bro. I love this guitar. It it, was, it fit the vibe like perfectly for what I need yeah. for sure. Yeah, like you doing that using that guitar, using those strings gave it a kind of warmth that I feel just really pulls it together in a spectacular way. Yeah. Love that song, man. I'm really love happy you feel that way cuz I, I I honestly wasn't sure when I was recording it that one day. I remember mm-hmm. being like, like, yeah, this, keep in mind, this is a time when I had like nothing and no one. And like, I, like, I had <laughs> yeah. friends, I had friends, but I was in that period of depression where you can't, you really can't reach out to anyone. Yeah. And like, y- you just don't you, want to, and you aren't ready right. to. So I was just like going Low to energy. work, coming, yeah, I was going to work, coming home, <laughs> just working on the album just by mm-hmm. myself. I like wasn't talking to anybody can like. It, I people were checking in on me, but it felt like no one was there for me. Yeah. Like you know how depression can do that sometimes. It can screw um, with you. Yeah. So I just remember like finding that loop one day, like mm-hmm. getting those like textures on the guitar recorded and like playing that little acoustic riff over it, and I just felt mm-hmm. like I don't know what happened. I felt such <laughs> comfort, and I was just like, oh yeah, like that. I was like, this is exactly like what I needed right now. It, it, I don't know, it was yeah. weird. It, it felt like I was trying to like, like subconsciously like heal myself or make something <laughs> that felt really healing. And yeah, uh, I just, I did, I, I basically came up with it and recorded it in the same night. Um, I just like got crazy. my mic and propped it up and just recorded that. And then I just kept building yeah. it. Dude, that's how it goes, man. What, like when you really like find when you like for music, you know, when, when you're just in that zone, you may not even know it sometimes while you're in the zone, but when like that headspace, yeah, those, those are typically the best songs. Yeah. Dude, yeah. I, I remember like, I'm glad you said that because I remember that night specifically being like some sort of trance and uh-huh. then it's like, mm-hmm. it's funny how the process of making that album went because like, I would just have all these bottled up emotions from like all the shit I was dealing with and just like mm-hmm. all the terrible thoughts in my head. But then like I would go to play and like every couple days <laughs> something new would come out and yeah. something new would come out that just kept me going. And like it would occupy my brain a bit actually. There's a few things mm-hmm. and a few like techniques I kind of used to like circumvent the just absolute like misery I was going through. But like, yeah, <laughs> there was like, little tidbits of music that I made and those little loops like that I could get like to a point where I could make like a shitty bounce of it and like listen to it the next day at work like like, on the train to work or whatever like or on the car ride like that kept me going like I really remember just like getting those bits and pieces figured out little by little and like it was Mm -hmm. it was really really helpful for me man it straight up was like 
like I was going to therapy, but it was this was like the actual therapy I needed, if that makes sense. Yep. Mm-hmm. I do. I that does make sense. Yeah. Techniques are like I don't know, man. Techniques are helpful for sure. But for creative people, like there's no better medicine or cure than picking up that guitar or putting some blank pieces of paper in front of your face and just writing or yeah. whatever you do, you know, painting, just throw some paint on, on a canvas or whatever. Like that's, if you're a creative person and you have depressive spells, that's the medicine. That's yeah. it. And yeah, I mean, I'm glad you could hear it in, in stillness. Cause that song really mm-hmm. was like such like a light, to me in a time yeah. of just such such darkness mm-hmm. that's awesome man great yeah. song thank you so i want to tell you uh a funny little thing i was listening to uh glacier today oh nice um, to oh, kind of nice. like prime the pumps for talking to you uh and i've heard it before um i've probably listened to it a couple times but i just wanted to hear it again and yeah, that track shout out to joey from darkfield he's a homie did he uh oh is he on he or... might be it, did he help you with that track is that what you're saying yeah he uh me and him collaborated Sweet. at like 50 50 oh nice nice yeah that's a good one um i was uh driving over a bridge there's a lot of bays where i live so driving over a bridge is pretty common like right. no matter where you're going uh, I'm driving over this bridge and it's super windy today. And so like you get this really nice wave effect, but they're, they're very smooth waves. Cause it's not that windy yeah. where they're like harsh and it's, you know, afternoon. So the sun's just shining right down on the, on the tops of these waves as they're billowing. And I'm listening to glacier and I'm like, this is amazing, bro. I can't wait for this. Dude. I can't wait that, to talk to you, dude. <laughs> dude, that's why I like make yeah. this like type mm-hmm. of music. Like I make it for yeah. moments like that. Like mm-hmm. Yeah, dude, I yeah. I've like a lot of times I'll test drive like stuff I'm making yeah. in nature <laughs> or in mm-hmm. like a really pretty drive or whatever. And like, yeah. that's how you'll know. Like Yeah, I, see I what the track- experience is. Yeah, I have a track I'm working on right now. Actually, a lot of tracks on the whole next album I have demoed. Like I'm, I've been test nice. driving it like on hikes and stuff, and like that's sweet. Yeah, I, I, you got to make sure the vibes right, and if it's not, you got to yeah. know how to fix it. Yeah, man, that's so cool to hear you say that because uh, I, I wonder. This is something I want to start asking musicians um, when they when they come on is, uh, you know. What kind of with that process, the writing process of the music, which you've answered, but that's something that's beginning to interest me is like, does the song come and you're like, let's get this recorded, throw it out there. How many musicians, I wonder, are willing to, um, you know, willing to delve into what the experience of the listener is going to be? in different scenarios that so the fact that you kind of are thinking about that that's pretty sweet because yeah i mean like at the end of the day like i'm a listener like i'm one of my fans too Mm -hmm. and like i'm not gonna just make some bullshit that i don't really vibe with yeah Um, that's just not the goal and i've like i've been in bands like that before where something will put i'll put out like i'll be like yeah but but yeah. like it's a collaborative process, so you know, fuck right. it, like, roll with it. And I usually yeah. do, but like this project, Secret Gardens, is like I basically like I don't know. I I make it so that I love listening to it back and back again. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. that's the goal. Like, cause I I make I I basically like the mission statement. I would say is like making soundtracks to like moments in life where I didn't necessarily have them. Like I would have some vibes and some songs that parts of it would fit really cool. But like, 
I don't know. I just have this specific like music oriented brain. So I would like, I wouldn't be able to think of a song. Like I'm sure if I searched Spotify for days, I would find a song that fits exactly how I'm feeling and really resonates yeah. with me. And that's kind of shit's happened before. But like most times I'll be like, I know how to make this. So why don't I just yeah. go make it? That's cool. Yeah. And I'm really like, I feel really lucky to be able to like have that kind of ability. Not that I'm like the greatest in the world or anything or any sort of like savant, but I do, I do think I know myself well musically to be able to create what I'm trying to create and not that's like sick. muddy the process. <clears throat> so if I can say one thing about myself, I guess that's it. But whether or yeah. not that's good, that's up to everyone else. <laughs> probably <laughs> i would say that's probably a good thing um yeah dude that's so cool the experience of listening to a song that touches you is almost transcendent to the song itself it's like it's like the song is coming with you on the journey yeah. that you find yourself in and you know Every once in a while, somebody just puts out one of those songs, puts out one of those songs, and it's just, it's like, I can take this with me on my everyday. Yeah. It's super cool. It's a that's, great experience. That's really awesome. I'm, it makes yeah. me really happy, like, genuinely happy at the bottom of my heart to hear that, like, someone mm -hmm. else has that. Yeah. I've gotten a couple really, really just nice messages mm -hmm. over the past few freaking months, Good. dude. It's it's yeah. been like I don't know what to say. Like mm -hmm. yeah. It it's 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 like hard to put into words because it's like I just make this for me, like <laughs> yeah. first and foremost, yeah. so that I have like a way to get it out. But like the fact that it <clears> resonates <throat> with anyone else is just like, oh my god, like <laughs> I don't know how to put it into words. Mm-hmm special yeah that's cool man i'm glad to hear that people are responding um yeah, yeah. and it I, honestly from my perspective a fan a listener it makes sense man your, your stuff is very relatable and i'm sure that's not going to change even with a little bit of a different sound in the future yeah i mean my hope is that like everyone who enjoys tundra isn't wanting to be sad and like emotional all the time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and that there's other space for other emotions. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, even when I'm done with the four seasons albums, like, I don't know. I'm, I'm just hoping that there's some other way to connect after that, if that makes sense. But yeah, no, I definitely think, be. I think we're all capable as human beings of like a lot of different emotions. And, Oh yeah. I'm I'm just I'm happy I was able I'm happy some portion of my work so I'm mm. happy some portion of my work was able to connect with anybody in any yeah. way but yeah I think there's I think there's more to be told in the story mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's awesome man Um I am starting to run low on battery but if if you have time for one more interesting topic Oh, I have plenty. I got an interesting topic. Sorry. And I, sh I should have yeah, enough I'm... battery. Oh, cool. Are you there? I can't see myself. There we go. Sorry. Okay. You're good. Cool. Yeah, no, I, 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 have a little, I have a little juice left. I'm still good, but yeah. I'm okay. All right, sweet. Um, I should... I should check my juice, actually. <laughs> my battery is getting old. Uh, I'm going to check my juice real quick. What do we have? I, I'm scared. I'm scared, though. If I push that home screen, I'm scared it's going to screw up the whole thing. No, just you have an iPhone? Just swipe mm -hmm. down, and you should see it. Swipe down? Okay. Yeah, from the top. I don't know what iPhone you have, but... Probably good for what we got. What, what did what you I say? Have. What did you say you had? 8%. Oh, cool. I have 27. Shout out. Shout out. 27. 27 <laughs> club. <laughs> um, 8% though should be enough to, to get through one last interesting talking point. Sure. Um, so do you, are you able to, uh, are you like a musician full time? 
do you still have to do some other job for like bill money and stuff like that? How does that work for you? Yeah, I do. I do. Um, the goal is to not mm -hmm. have to, um, you know, like if I had a perfect world, I would just make secret gardens albums and do whatever the fuck yeah. I want. That'd be awesome. Right. Right. <laughs> but, yeah. No, I, like, like everyone else, I have a regular job. Uh, mm -hmm. I've been working at venues for the past, like, I've had this job in the, for the past like eight years doing security at random different venues oh, in the yeah. area. Okay. And that's a pretty sweet gig because it's like make your own schedule kind yeah, of. Yeah, like, that's cool. You know, I see a bunch of shows, I see a bunch of sports games and nice. shit like that. Um, so that's been cool and it's been really good to me. But I've also done like producing on the side, like making okay. other people's records and stuff because mm -hmm. I did go to school for audio engineering and um okay that makes sense yeah now i'm now i'm trying to go now i'm trying to do more touring work like tech work and other shit like that okay so still within the industry but you know i know not like like secret gardens like i make some money off the records here and there like when people are nice mm -hmm. enough to buy them on Bandcamp. um but yeah. it's not like that's like a cash flow thing of mine at all like you know okay. it's just it's a it's a it's a passion project that i'm lucky excuse me to see any sort of dollar from at all yeah uh so like as far as you can tell as a musician where does the money really come from because you know you can put your stuff on apple spotify you mm -hmm. get some stream money i'm sure it's minimal yeah uh, obviously if somebody buys the album that's probably ideal but I, yeah. i've been wondering like where's the big where are the big bucks if you're like yourself, somebody who just is making music and doing well. Your thing. A lot of post rock bands will actually do a lot of sync work uh, and get their hmm. music on television and film. Oh yeah, that's big bucks for <laughs> sure. That shit's great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you have a decent following, like if you have like a solid like five hundred people who love mm -hmm. your stuff and buy your merch and buy your records, like that points a long ways away from me. But like, okay, yeah, like if you if you're at that point, like you release a record. 500 people buy it it's ten dollars that's like mm -hmm. five thousand dollars right yeah like, math right yeah like that's I'm pretty sure <laughs> like that's not bad like it's a nice I, little chunk of change like you know yeah but also playing shows if you're touring you can make money mm -hmm. off that and selling merch and stuff yeah so hmm. yeah which i'm actually gonna start doing which i'm so stoked i haven't announced nice. this yet uh formally but yeah I'm, I'm playing the first show um yeah, it's gonna be fucking awesome. That's sweet. Can it? Can you say or or not? But will yeah, it be? I can, I can will say it be you? Fine. But no, will it so be we, you? Or are you gonna have some people with you? I'm gonna have a full band with me. I'm gonna have nice. some. I have That's some sick. awesome, awesome, talented friends that I've met over the years who are oh, gonna play with me. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm playing. Uh, I'm playing Tundra in its entire nice. top. Oh, of. that's so cool, man. Yeah, wow. it's gonna be fucking awesome. I mean. I know it's a long ways away from you in New York, but yeah. <laughs> fucking come out, dude. That'd be awesome. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> yeah. That would be amazing. Yeah, that yeah, would I'm be doing so that, cool. I'm doing that for the album's anniversary this winter. So I'm nice. really stoked about it. I'm going to announce it in like a couple weeks, like formally, but I don't yeah. care. I'll, I'll start telling people about it now. I've already told a bunch of people. Nice. And, I've, and I've already started rehearsing actually for mm -hmm. it uh, and getting like, I have to relearn the whole album and I have to teach the album to my buddy who's playing second yeah. guitar. So it's like, and you know, my buddy who's, who's playing drums, my buddy who's playing bass. So it's like, it's going to be really awesome. And I got, uh, I got vinyl pressed for it actually for that oh, nice. show. Nice. So if I have any leftovers, I'll put them online, but we'll see. Yeah. Hopefully not, you know, hopefully you'll sell out. That'd be pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> Um, pressing vinyl when you're like a small independent artist doing like small runs is very expensive, but yeah, I, I think I'm just trying to listen to the universe and hear like the really nice people who have said stuff and mm -hmm. said like, Oh, I would love a vi this on vinyl. And I'm yeah. just, I figured, you know what? Fuck it. I'll take a risk and I'll, I press, mean, like, a small run of it. It's like 20 copies. I mean, I, it. I, yeah, everybody's doing it, you know? Uh, I follow a deathcore band that is putting their albums on vinyl That's and awesome. people are buying it. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, vinyl's made an interesting comeback in the past 
three years. I don't think he'll have a problem selling vinyl. Hope so. Hope yeah. so. Hope so. But I also don't think he'll have a problem. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I mean, fuck it. I'm I'm just happy yeah. I got to the point where I was able to even put it on vinyl. Like that's yeah, that's pretty for sweet. Me. Yeah. So cool, man. Hell yeah, well, dude. dude. Um, thanks for coming on. This was this was fun. This was yeah, great. dude. This was great. Let's um. Let's do it again sometime when we all have more phone battery. Yeah, yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> I didn't get quite enough charge um, from charging it in my car on the way to uh, to my little spot here. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, once you um, once you get that new album out, it'd be cool to to have you on again and maybe talk oh, yeah. about that. Yeah, man, Dude. it'll be out this year. Uh, next year, sorry, twenty twenty two. It'll be out. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it'd be cool to bring it back on. We'll do like a album premiere beer review. Fuck yeah, man. Be pretty sweet. I'm down. All right, dude. Hell yeah. Well, thanks, man. Uh, really appreciate you coming on today. Appreciate Dave. the music a lot. And I'm I'm really happy to hear that you're going full steam ahead. That's that's pretty sweet. Yeah, sure am, man. Thanks, Adam. I really appreciate you like showing me love and even wanting to have me on. Yeah, of course, dude. Do you want to shout anything out before we go? Or yeah, I mean, check out Glacier Marriage. That's the le- that's the latest single I have. I'm you know keep an eye out on my social media. Throw me a follow if you're, and you know check out Tundra. That's my last album that just came out. And um, yeah, like I have some stuff coming up for the anniversary of Tundra, which I've kind of talked about already uh, a little bit. But yeah, no, I'm I'm gonna be putting out shit from you know this winter towards the next couple quarters of the next year and I'm, I'm i'm working on a bunch of shit to put out so keep you know stay stay in touch stay tuned follow me on spotify all that fun shit nice all right man i appreciate you dude <laughs> hell yeah man have a good day dude you too you too man all right later bud all right talk to you see ya all right everybody thank you Thank you for watching. We had a pretty good consistent audience, which was fun. Um, again, that was Greg from uh, uh, of. I don't know whether to say from or of in this scenario, but uh, he does. Um, <clears throat> he does Secret Gardens, and just good music. If you're watching right now and and you're a post rock fan, you haven't checked him out. It's basically a must. If you're not in the post rock genre check it out anyway it's very good wholesome music and obviously he's got a lot of cool stuff coming down the pipe so one last time thanks for doing that man and as always guys i will see you in the next episode i believe there will be a psychologist on next week so we're gonna have some interesting conversations uh around the realm of uh humanity i suppose love you See you next time.